All right, Mr. Wesley, go ahead and uh, come to the mic. Hi, I'm Wesley Lawrence Curry the second. How is everybody? Great. Good. 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 What's the what's the topic for this evening, gentlemen? Well, we started out. Um, I started out reading an article about these uh, five red heifers being sent to Jerusalem, and people were trying to equate that as a sign of the third temple in Jerusalem that is about to be rebuilt, and how that might be a sign of end times prophecy. And we started talking about that, and then we started touching on some Christian Zionism with John Hagee and uh my brother jt mack here stated that uh hank hanegraaff the bible answers man uh was critiquing john hagee and christian zionists and then i started you know um talking about <laughs> eastern orthodoxy and how uh hank hanegraaff had uh converted but hank hanegraaff said that he's always been eastern orthodox so i mentioned that and then that's how we got on the topic of the eastern orthodox topic because we were just trying to figure out what would be the difference between Protestantism and Eastern Orthodoxy? Hey, by, by this, way, this excites, so 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 temple reconstruction is the general area. Correct, uh, JT Mac, uh, you want to say something? Yeah, real quick. By the way, I did find some of uh, 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 Hank discussing Zionism on on, on Bible Answer Man, so I do have a clip. Uh, whenever you get a chance, hey, if you would go ahead and email that to me, and, and I and I'll check that out. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Lawrence. What was that? Well, I, I suggest this strongly, that um, the temple that Jesus rebuilds is not the temple built by the hands of men, that it's not a building of cinder blocks and bricks and woods and mortar and steel beams and arches and cathedrals and Gothic crosses. The temple that Jesus restores and rebuilds is the soul. And Jesus showed me my soul. And when he showed it to me, I was in front of his judgment seat. And he showed it to me by lifting my head as I slept and removing the scales of my judgment from my eyes so that I could see the supernatural realm. My soul, which in those days, I said, yeah, Jesus is God. I am baptized. I am washed in his blood. I am saved. You know, I, 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 I say his name. I say he is Jesus Christ. I say he is God. And, and I am saved. And I'm washed in his blood and baptized. And, and I had been dunked in the water in an apostolic church. But the reality um, of, of life was different than my lip service. For when I was shown my soul in front of the judgment seat of Jesus, it appeared like dead gray ashes uh, from head to toe. From the, the toes, it was just just the, the, the deadest gray. It wasn't a pleasant gray. It was dead gray. And, and it was something that, so, so this is something that's that the that temple was watching. That's the temple. And this is something that you was... Uh, seeing yourself like like with your own eyes well yes like like an angel was standing next to me and lifting my head up as i slept so that i could fix my sight on my soul and see what i really looked like to jesus in the spiritual world and it was filthy dead ashes now in the bowels underneath the stomach was the Holy Spirit. I did see the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ in me. And it okay. is a pearl of great wealth. It was a pearl of snow white color inside of all those dead gray ashes. And that is the temple that Jesus came back to restore. And it, all the ashes that I saw were wet with an oil, a clear, clean oil. There was well, not a dry place on them. So yeah, here's yeah. what happened to me. Well, well hold on. I, I want to see what kind of oil was it. Was it like a olive oil or was it like <laughs> oil? I didn't put any of it in my mouth other than to speak. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, you it, got taste it was it. clear. It, it was clear. I don't know. It could have been Wesson oil. <laughs> it, whatever it was, it was, I'm not going to, I'm just going to say that it was saturated 
with a clear, clean oil. There was no dry place on them. And Jesus loosened the devil to show me how strong I really am in the supernatural world. He released the devil on me for a moment. And the part of me that Satan could not touch was the Holy Spirit, that pearl that I had seen in my belly. Um, that is, at that time, that was the only breastplate of righteousness that I had managed to grow. That was the only helmet of salvation that I had managed to achieve by works and faith. And the devil could not touch that pearl of light. But the rest of my dead gray ashes, I, what happened was Satan pulled the fire down from heaven. Now, hold and, on, now, 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 now you're giving us you're giving us some visuals. I'm, I'm trying to be uh, to, sure. to kind of be specific. How, how big was that pearl? Was it the size of like a basketball? Yeah, soccer, soccer ball, ball, somewhere about that. Yeah. Okay. And this is what, and this yeah. is what was in your belly. This is what you know. In my bowels. Yes. Yeah, and so so I guess it was kind of walking around looking like a pregnant man. Was that? <laughs> it was kind of. <laughs> I, I was walking around looking like that. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, you even drew the illustration. <laughs> yeah, I looked like that. That okay, well, go, circle go. in the middle. That was where the Holy Spirit of Jesus I saw was or is, and the rest of my body was not healthy. It was dead gray ashes. And that's the temple. That's what I did to the temple of Jesus Christ by my, my, my evil ways. The, 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 the wages of sin is death. And each time I had sinned, uh, a little piece of my soul was burned into a, a flake of ash. So um, the, the, no, the devil attacked me. Let me say this. The, when the devil pulled fire down, he said in my mind, without speaking in my ears, and he spoke the words, I will turn and toss you violently like a ball. And then he went away. And the time he was speaking that, I was paralyzed. Wherever those ashes were in my soul, I could not move. It was like I was electrocuted. Or, or tasered. Um, and I believe that that was the fire that Satan pulled down. He didn't actually enter into me, but he pulled a fire down and used that fire upon me. And um, not unlike, if we need carnal words to describe it in similarity, not unlike a either a lightning bolt or a, uh, a, a television camera using electricity, manipulating it from that site to my cell phone right here and directing its energy in that way. So I believe that that was that fire that Satan pulls down that is written of in Revelation and that he put those words into my head. I will turn and toss you violently like a ball. All right, and I, found um, those, I found those words in the King James Version, but I found where Satan had perverted them. In Isaiah 22 is the... Yeah, so I want to kind of talk about that fire that uh, that that um, that the devil was pulling down. You said, in, in what book chapter and verse was that? Well, in Isaiah 22, it is the Lord shall turn and toss thee violently like a ball into a large country. There thou shalt die. And there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of the Lord's house. But that's not what Satan said. Satan took that verse and perverted it and said, I will turn and toss you violently like a ball. Where the word of Jesus Christ is, the Lord shall turn and toss you violently like a ball into a large country. There thou shalt die. There the chariots of thy glory shall be right. the shame of the Lord's house. So yeah, Satan, I hear, Satan. Yeah, because I want to hear more about this, uh, about this satanic fire that you got. So, so can you tell us more about that satanic fire that you got that, that, that had happened? Because I want to make sure that, you know, if, if the fire, if Satan brings down fire on me, I want to make sure that uh, that it's actually the fire of Satan and not the fire of God. I don't want to get it that confused. It wasn't the fire of God. It was right. October 10, 2005 when that happened. Right. So so how would I know or differentiate between the fire of Satan and the fire of God? Well, <laughs> if it was paralyzing, it was Satan. 
<laughs> All right. Satan so if comes, I get so, so Satan if I comes to snare you, to okay. harm you, to destroy you, to paralyze you, to stop you. And that's what that fire did. It paralyzed. So the how did you get me the, that were not the parts of me that were not baptized? I could not move. And so, so how did you gain mobility again? So um, it, had, it only lasted. It only lasted for a few moments. It didn't last for a long time. So he just did it just for a little while, and then he just um, then he released you like like it says. Um, God is going to bound Satan in Revelation. He's just going to bound him for a little while, and then release him. That's kind of like what happened to you that you was bound for a little while, and then released. Not more than fifteen seconds. Oh, okay. And then what happened after um, you were bound and paralyzed? Like, like, did you stand up? Did the devil just flee, or or did you kind of yeah, like? Yeah, I stood up and I, I stood. I stood up and I looked outside of uh, uh, my hospital room. I was in the hospital at the time, and there were two uh, Taiwanese nurses at the nurse station, and they were looking at each other like, "Oh, great intelligence! Great intelligence!" And I, so you I came could, out with a high knowledge, I, huh? So you came out. So, so when you awoke, you you had the high knowledge. Is that what they were saying? That you had a? Oh, I didn't high have any knowledge. higher knowledge. It was like I was raped. <laughs> that you wait, hold on. You said that you were what? The no, the two nurses. Right uh, within a minute of it happening, or within five minutes of it happening, two nurses outside of my hospital room said. Oh, great intelligence, great intelligence. And so I can only suggest that it had happened to them, too, where they were standing, that uh, they thought it was an intelligent thing. Wait, so this happened while you were in Taiwan? No, it happened when I was in Chicago. Ah, OK, OK. So, OK, so now you leave the hospital and then you got the two Taiwanese nurses saying that great intelligence, great intelligence. Now, were they referring to you? as having great intelligence or you being great intelligence down to earth they were talking they had just been struck in the head by satan's fire and they thought it was intelligent and they thought it was god and so they so so they thought that you were a part of satan as well or did they no just... no they no I, we were in different rooms when it happened but it happened wow. to me now again this thing happened now that night that night when satan said I will turn and toss you violently like a ball. That was the 10th day of October in the year of 2005. Then again, this happened, but he couldn't get into me. For Jesus had given me the strength to and, and the Holy Spirit to restore the temple. Like I said, the part of me that Satan could not touch, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, was the part of me that Jesus had baptized that was that white as snow pearl of great wealth. Right. But so the, part, the parts of me that were still unclean, Satan could put that fire into. So, okay. So, so when um, the scriptures talks about giving us the armor, um, uh, giving us the armor of, of God, right? Put, put on the whole armor of God. You're saying that you had on the whole armor of God, but, Satan was still able to um he, he was still able to attack you on certain parts except for your belly. Is that I'm that saying you're... that the only the only armor of God that I had is the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. And when Satan attacked me that time, it was only the parts of me that were that snow white Holy Spirit, the baptized part of my soul. I imagined that being baptized meant that I was all 100% clean from head to toe. But in reality, it is not so. I was only baptized as much as that snow white pearl was in my soul. Right. And so, that is, that I had not done enough work, done the work of faith for Jesus to turn that into, up, you know, up into the helmet of salvation. So Satan could still get into me uh, when Jesus loosened him. And then, right. you know, yeah. Because so, uh, now this thing happened again on the thirty-first day. Now hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I, I got a question before we move on. Sure. All right. So, so Satan was able to, to you know, um, attack the black parts of you, but the, the white dead part, gray, the death, 
Why? The death. Why? The wages of sin is death. Those Why? ashes Why? I had seen are death. Those parts of the those ashes were my name blotted out of the book of life. Okay. And and then the white part, he could he couldn't get to the white part because that was the, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I, the clean part, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ part. He could not touch that part. He could not All right, now I got a question. He could not enter it. Okay, so so I have um I have you know black skin and I don't have that's any... got nothing to do with anything. Okay, all right, because I, I wanted to make sure because it seemed like that uh devil's that the devil can attack the black parts, but he can't attack the white parts. No, 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 no. We're talking in spiritual words now. No, your skin color means nothing to me whatsoever. All right, all right. All right, go your go ahead. You can continue with the story. I'm glad to all hear right, it. So, so you said it's October thirty first, and what happened on that day? March thirty first, twenty twenty. That time Jesus loosened Satan and he could not get into me. But I knew that Satan had tried to say, don't tell the vision. And this is written in scripture in Isaiah, where out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false teacher came an unclean spirit like a frog. And I asked Jesus to shine the revealing light of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh on earth. For when Satan had said in everyone's heads, don't tell the vision, he put that unclean spirit like a frog upon them. And it was only the head of a frog. And it was a dead black color. It wasn't even a, a living black color. It, ah, black. Ah. it had two teeth fangs on its throat and it had a UPC barcode on its forehead and it didn't that have any ears. Piece, huh? and the Omnicar. Yeah, that is. But anyway, that was that frog head is Allah. That is what all Islam has always prayed to. And Wait, that uh, way. Uh, 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 hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So you said that the frog head is Allah. So, yep. so where in scripture can I go to, to correlate a frog's head with Allah from Islam. Well, I just told you, out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false teacher came an unclean spirit like a frog. And, and, and how do we get Allah from that? That voice that said, I shall turn and toss you violently like a ball, is how Satan fooled Muhammad into writing the Quran. That is the method, the manner that Satan used to get the Quran written. Okay, so so God has now sent you to kind of warn us of what's going to happen in the future? I'm not a prophet, but I'm a teacher, and I have heard the prophets, and I know what they mean. I know the meanings of the words Jesus gave them. All right, so... So what can you tell us about these red heifers that's coming to Jerusalem? I mean, do you think that's <laughs> prophecy being fulfilled or red heifers? Or... I, I got 144,000 Jewish children to take through Jerusalem to Megiddo. What do you mean red heifers? <laughs> yeah, I was reading um uh, let me let me see if I can pull this back up, but I was reading a uh, I was reading an article and they were talking about these five red heifers that have been brought to uh Jerusalem and everybody is kind of like rejoicing saying that these red heifers is a symbol of the third temple that's about to be rebuilt. That's again, when Satan attacked me and said, I shall turn, I will turn and toss you violently like a ball. I didn't have a breastplate Holy Spirit. I didn't have a helmet Holy Spirit. But how did I get that pearl of light, that pearl of great wealth to restore my soul, my temple, the third temple? By saying, I saw green grass in the dream from Jesus. By saying, Jesus showed me a foot of a Caucasian man and it was cut off. And it didn't, ah, bleed. Hold up, and hold it didn't hold bleed, hold means hold I failed to believe in Jesus. As hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on now. We, 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 we got to stop right there. Hold on, we got to stop it right there. You said that you saw a foot of a white man and that was Jesus? You don't listen. I said, <laughs> I saw a right, right. right. playing, brother. I saw a vision from Jesus, and there was a Caucasian man's leg, 
and the foot of that leg I saw it cut off on cankered gold and silver, and it didn't bleed. And it didn't bleed means I fail you by not believing in Jesus' forgiveness. And when I fail you, I fail Jesus. And the white sock on the foot cut off means I fail you by not uplifting the Holy Spirit. And when I fail you not uplifting the Holy Spirit, I fail God, and his name is Jesus. And the two creatures, they mean I fail you when I'm double-tongued, when I'm double-hearted and double-minded. One creature cut the foot off, and the other lifted its hands, but neither said any words, and they really enjoyed what they were doing. And they're like me when I am double-minded and double-tongued and double-hearted. And I saw orange-red in the lower dark green leaves on palm trees. And those trees mean I fail Jesus not getting involved. And saying this vision from Jesus, Jesus restored the temple. And that when Satan came and said, don't tell the vision, he could not get into me in any way. Okay, so now I know. So, all, so all those ashes I had seen had been restored now into light. So, so none of this was revealed to you by reading the scripture. It was just based on your own personal experience. It's revealed on experience and scripture. Right, because because you know, if we be fair, you mentioned Muhammad earlier. You said that Muhammad was was uh coerced by the devil into writing the Quran. Now he had a mystical experience, and none of what he experienced can be supported by scripture. And at the same time, respectfully, what you're saying is not really supported by scripture to where I can go and read and say that this is exactly what happens when a person uh encounters God. So how will we know that your experience is real or maybe the same entity that encountered Muhammad did not encounter you at the same time and maybe you could be deceived? I speak from Jesus who said, it is time. Right, and, and Muhammad, did, Muhammad said the same thing too. So, so what would make you different between Muhammad and, and, and yourself? I speak from Jesus who told you, tell the vision three times. Tell the vision you shall heal without money. Tell the vision you shall not need the mark. And then Jesus said to you, no time to talk, Allah. And then Jesus said to you, you want war. That is the Jesus I speak from. I do not speak from Satan who said, sad and delicious. I do not speak from Satan who said, I shall turn and toss you violently like a ball. I right. do not speak from Satan who told you, don't tell the vision and vomited the frog Allah on all your heads. Okay, now now, now I hear what you're saying. Uh, trust me, now, I hear what you're saying. What Jesus do you speak from? Do you speak on, from Jesus on, that said, on, tell on, the vision? Or on, hold on, hold on, sir, hold on. You, you, you kind of came you kind of came and bombarded the conversation now. So I, I want to know, because let's be, let, let's be fair. Muhammad has a book. Okay. I just want to let you know your mic's off right now. Um, yeah. And you will be taking a Okay. And you'll. All right. Uh, yeah, that's enough of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, if you guys don't uh, know, know who this particular guy is, he likes to come in and try to hijack the conversations. You know, and I'm and I'm really trying to have a meaningful dialogue with him, but you know, he wants to just come in, and he he just wants to talk and over talk. So you can't come into my, you can't come into the into the live stream and just try to over talk me. You know, I mean, if now if you want to have a respectful dialogue, we can do that. But you know, I got some questions though, and if you say that you are speaking truth and you're speaking from Jesus, we want to hear you, but we want to make sure that we're doing this respectfully. You can't just come and hijack the conversation. All right, so I can bring you back in, sir, but we got some questions. And the reason why we got some questions is because we've there's been plenty of people over the course of history who say that they have gotten visions and revelations from God and from Jesus. And that's why we have to ask, we have to ask these questions. Since we can't ask Allah, we can't ask Joseph Smith or Charles Taze Russell. Up oh, he left. Well, since we can't answer these people or ask these people questions, 
then we have to then we have to ask these questions and, and try to get an understanding. So, but you know, he left, and uh, kind of glad he left because, you know, he he's one of those guys who like to come in, and <laughs> he like to come in and try to hijack the conversation. So this is him right here. He he's in the chat right now, and I mean, it's just the time that we live in right now, guys. It's just a time that we live in where you got people who go from chat room to chat room. Uh, they just want to take over the chats, take over the conversation. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And, and one thing about the Internet now is that it is a gift and a curse because we can be able to spread the gospel effectively and we can actually reach souls and we can actually we actually have the opportunity to teach people uh, the true word of God and not just our mystical experiences. And then we also have people who just run amok on the Internet. They just want to come out here. Say whatever they want. They don't want to listen to anyone. You know, as you can see, the guy, uh, you know, he wants to talk so much that he's not willing to have a decent dialogue. A decent conversation so when i started to challenge him on his own beliefs he wanted to just hop out of the chat <laughs> he wanted to he he wanted to just leave because he doesn't want to be uh he, he doesn't want to be challenged you know he just doesn't want to be challenged on what he says or what he's saying because the, the stuff that he was saying was just pure madness it's pure madness He's talking about the frog and a barcode behind a frog's head, and that's supposed to be Allah. And then, you know, his body was black, and then the only part that was white was his belly because it was the pearl and the Holy Spirit. None of that stuff is is found in Scripture. You can't substantiate it. You know what I'm saying? You, you, he, he can't substantiate his claim. So that's why we got questions. And that's why we have to address these things, you know. But... um but we have to pray for guys like this because this is what's happening nowadays, uh, especially in the world that we live in. A lot of people are misled by these mystical experiences. And I don't doubt that this man had an experience. I don't doubt that at all. But the thing is, is that just because a person has an experience doesn't actually mean that it is something from God. I've had supernatural experiences, but you better believe I'm not going to hop on here and start talking about all of my experiences and try to turn a doctrine into that and say, I knew it was the voice of God. Because there's some things that have happened to me to where I'd have been left scratching my head. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I can't find this experience in scripture. I know. I know I'm crazy, but I know I ain't that crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So certain things, you know, I don't really talk about. I don't really discuss because I've tried talking about my mystical experiences to certain people and I've gotten two conflicting answers. And these are people who have been a part of the Lord's church. One person telling me that the devil is trying to attack me. Another person is telling me that there's a calling from God. You see what I'm saying? So I just rather keep that stuff to myself. But, you know, I believe that right now in the end of days. In the end of times, the devil is busy. He is active. But I believe that God is still working. And I believe that more times than ever, than any other time in history, is the time where we really, really need to be paying attention to the word of God. And we really need to be into the word because there's so many distractions out there. 